Welcome to Mishnah study. Welcome to Masechet Pe'ah, Perek Chet, Mishnah Aleph, this last, last Perek of Masechet Pe'ah. So over here we're going to focus on this Mishnah. When is the Leket season over? Also Peret, Olilot, at what time, at what point is anyone allowed to go and gather what was left over? You know, we can't say it belongs to Anim forever and Anim are incoming. So at what point do we say the season's over? So at what point is anyone allowed to go ahead and take like it? Right? We're asking this because the leket is only belongs to the aniim when the aniim are there, right? The pasuk says they ani ger You have to leave them for the ani and the ger. Now, when there's no more aniim, anyone, God, Hakadosh Baruch Hu said, we don't have to leave them for to, to be destroyed or leave them to the birds, right? At that point, if it's not being left for the ani and the ger, so anyone else is allowed to go ahead and take these uh, leket and shikha uh, pe'ah, whatever it may be. So at what point? So the Mishnah continues and says, right? Once the namushot pass, what are these namushot? These namushot are, it most literally, it means elders, right? The zikinim, right? The elderly people, they come, they take their time to come. So over here, it's actually being a borrowed term. It's not literally meaning the, when the when, after the old people come. It's more as a borrowed term as Anabam explains that it's the people who are coming to gather, to collect after they already collected. So it's the second round of collectors, right? So they came, they gathered the like it. Now more people came, they gathered like it. Second time, at this point, we're comparing these people almost like to, 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 the, to the elderly. It takes some time to come. Once they pass, at this point, anyone is allowed to go ahead and take the link. Now, what about Zetim? What about olives? Oh, olives, that's Mishtetere Drivi Ashnia, after the second rainfall, right? And Abba will explain what the second rainfall is in a second, but he digresses to just explain the etymology of the word Drivi Ah. We explained it as the second rainfall of, of the season, uh, but it literally means more of the second Drivi uh, Ah, literally means mating, right? So we're looking at the rain as something that's almost impregnating the ground, right? Similar to the way uh, a man uh, and a woman. So over here, the same language, Revi'ah, right? Tarbi'ah, right? We also have, we have a pasuk, Bem Techado Tarbi'ah Kilaim, right? So over here, the same, it's the same idea. The rain is almost impregnating the ground because that's how all the fruits and all the uh, plants, they grow from that from that rain. Uh, and that's what the Gemara means when it says, Mitra Ba'ala De'ara. Right? The matar is the husband of the earth. Now, when is this? So it's the second rainfall. At what point is this? So it really depends on the season itself, right? If we have a late, later Adar, if you have if you had Adar Shani, right? The year before, so it's going to be a little later. So Anabam gives you a, a few times. He says when it's an early season, it's going to the second rainfall is going to be the 17th of Hashvan. If it's a regular and you know, an average season, it'll be the 23rd of Hashvan, Bar Hashvan. And the if it's a later season, it'll be Rosh Chodesh Kislev. Now, anything that grains before uh, Yud Zayin Hashvan is really considered not considered part of the uh, the rainy season. That's already you know we consider like a fall. And Yehanabam also just points out that everything that we're mentioning over here is in Eretz Israel, right? If you go to different climates, different countries, it may be different. But what we were talking about in Eretz Israel, so the Zetim, on average, in the average year, the second rainfall will be around the 23rd of Hashvan. So at that point, anyone is allowed to go ahead and collect the olives. Um, now, Amar Bihuda, Bihuda says, Look, there are people who only go ahead and they harvest their, their, their olives after the second rain. They only start the harvest after the second rainfall. So what, are you going to give them to the Ani? You're going to say anyone's allowed to take them? People even start harvesting it. Forget about the Ani even coming. So no, rather when, he says, when it comes to a point where the Ani comes and all he's able to collect is four Isarot, Nisar is a uh, measurement of uh, four, uh, it's four gargere kesef, or it's like four like, kernels of uh, silver, that's the weight of it, 
four little, I would say, grains of like barley, so that, that same that same measurement uh, of, of of silver. That's all you could find the value of in weight. That's all that's left. At that point, it's not considered anything. But Tuna explains that this is enough for a uh, meal for him and his wife. So that's that, that's where he gets the, the value from. Arabam really doesn't get into that. But at that point, if it's that little value, then anyone anyone's allowed to take it. Uh, Parenthetically, Cameron Habam is just another point over here, and he points out that the moskim, right? We explained it as harvesting, but anytime you have the, uh, um, well, I'd say by olives, the verb for harvesting is mosik, right? Similar to when you have you you have also you have um, plowing in general is. Horesh, right? We also have oder. Oder is to, to hoe. It's a little bit different. If a person is uh, harvesting grapes, and about that, it's called botzer, botzer anavim, right? It's the same harvesting, but it's actually a little bit different of an action, right? Because you're, you're, the way you pick grapes is different than the way you actually bat an olive tree to get to, to, to harvest olives. And the way you cut wheat, you harvest wheat, is by cutting with the sickle, is a different action than the way, you know, olives or, or grapes. So each one has a different verb associated with it. That's just the richness of the Hebrew language. So when we say mosek, you're mosek zetim. You harvest grapes, mosek zetim. But you're botzer anavim and you're kotzer hita. Right, so Arambam just goes into that. Actually, uh, Bartanura also elaborates over here and he even brings a few other examples. You ore te'enim, right? You're goder temarim. So it's interesting how, how many verbs there are for the actual um, verb, the action of harvesting.